Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be looking at some of the newest news to hit us from the HDB sector, in particular for the PLH scheme that we'll be having, the new prime housing scheme. So the one that is the most interesting within these clusters of BTO flats that's released this round is definitely the one in Rochelle area, I believe it's called River Peak because this is the area that will be the first batch of the PLH uh, project that we see, the prime housing projects. So for those of you who are unaware, these prime housing projects are actually locations or projects that are located near the city central area and there are a couple of different rules moving forward, right? Your current existing flats around the areas are not affected at all, but the new projects launch under the prime areas will be subjected to a 10 year MOP period as well as have a 6% clawback of the resale price for the grants. So uh, one other thing to note is that Singapore singles, people who are applying under the single scheme are not eligible to get these new roadshow areas, these new BTO flats in the prime areas. Alright, but let's look at some of the implementations and some of the numbers that are launched to help us understand a little more about these new BTO clusters. Alright, so 960 roadshow areas are launched, 6% of the resale price will be clocked back by the government. I believe this is the grants, just for the grants, not the whole resale price. But let's look at it. Right, so 4,500 BTO projects, 960 in Rochelle. The first one under the public housing scheme, the PLH model, which is the prime area. So here, most interesting to note, 960, most of them are 3 and 4 room flats, which is quite similar to what HGB has been launching in the past few years we have much much lesser supply of 5 room flats, it's mostly 3 and 4 room flats to cater to the younger uh, population who are starting out smaller families 5 room flats you tend to have, they generally cater to multi-generational households or very large families with multiple kids right? but the 3 and 4 room flats, even the 4 room flats have 3 bedrooms so you could have a master room and 2 kids room also or 1 kids room and 1 parents room Right? So, this new area, River Peaks 1 and 2 in Rochor, most interestingly, let's look at the price. The price starts at $409,000 for a 3 room flat and $582,000 for a 4 room flat. To put things into perspective, if we look at areas such as uh, Sambawang, Ishua, that we should be looking only up to $400,000 maximum for a 4 room flat. So, compared to some of the other areas, the units in Rocho at River Peaks have a price stack of about 150% or 0.50% more, it costs half, uh, 1.5 times the amount, right? So uh, Queenstown also previously in August, now in August they haven't introduced the PLH model, so Queenstown still has a standard 5 year MOP, not a 10 year MOP. But the projects there were starting up to 540k for the 4 room flats. So we can see that clearly the prices are staging up. Cli uh, prices are slowly climbing. That's also because this is the new prime area near Rochor, very nice area near Jalan Besar area. And the rooms are actually slightly smaller as well, 66 to 88 square meters. Right? So subsequently moving forward, uh, based on the news, the in fact, the clawback for these units are 6% of the resale price at all valuation. And that actually, one thing to consider as well, this 6% when you pay, because you, let's assume you sell eventually at $800,000, you pay 6%. That 6% comes out entirely out of your profit. So this is going to be a very big factor. You know, even if you consider that the property doubles in price in future, when you pay 6%, the profit you are actually losing is 12% if you double up. One way to look at it that way. Alright, you are losing 12% profits. 6% of the entire flat's price, but you are losing 12% profit if it doubles up. So that makes essentially your 50% profit, you know. Let's say you double up, 50% it actually becomes 38%. Alright, so looking down. Okay, so to iron out the resale transaction prices, the first reseller, 
will be subject to this 6% clawback. Subsequently, all your future resales are not affected. So we can clearly see the impact of this. This is created just to curb the investment opportunity of these prime areas. Then being prime areas are going to be very highly sought after, very central, nice location, convenient for work. So HGB is introducing all these new measures, not just a 10 year uh, MOP period, but you also have a clawback for your first retail transaction to curb the investment. So if you are considering buying all these areas because of the future resale value, uh, do highly consider, run through the numbers again to see if it makes sense or perhaps frankly even maybe even a four room flat in Yishun or Sembawang less popular areas, uh, Woodlands could potentially be earning you much more than some of these houses because you're locked in for 10 years, right? I think the last thing here, let's take a look is to consider the time frame involved. So first things first, 10 year MOP period, that's not changing, but the building period is actually 71 months. So six years building period, you have to wait for six years if you apply for it and you get it. Six years plus 10 years, that's 16 years. Um, if you are, let's say you are a 30 year old you know, couple who's looking to get a first house and you wait these 16 years. By the time you are allowed to sell it, you'll be selling at an age of about 46 years old and you have just 19 years left to take a loan. Most people in their 50s to 55s is a time period when they are starting to slow down all of their property investments because the loan gets shorter and shorter and therefore their monthly repayment gets higher and higher. So by locking yourself in until 46 years old, uh, do consider that you have essentially you know, made a big chunk of your future timeline. You have committed it to a HDB BTO project uh, to stay, right? So this is all your investment horizon. This is your opportunity cost moving forward. So do be very, very uh, stringent when you come to when you come to select uh, what kind of properties you're looking for in your first property step. Okay, uh, this is going to be uh, some of the core um, principles or, or the core like unique points about the new PLH uh, projects in Rochor. And you know, going through this, I, I hope that this video has been helpful to help us understand like some of the news moving forward for some of these PLH um, houses. It remains to be seen in future whether we will continue to have similar kind of uh, strict controls for all these PLH because as far as I can, if you ask me, I mean, as far as I analyze it, that 16 year period is a very, very long time to be locked into one house. Uh, when it comes to 46 years old, you know, for a 30 year old married couple, 46 year old, you are pretty much, uh, most of your investing years are gone. Most of your time period is actually gone. On the other hand, if you were a very young couple, let's say you're 20 years old, then this becomes less of an issue because you'll be selling at 36 years old. You still have a good 20, you can still subsequently when you sell your property, look into your next um, investment property, you can still take a 30 year loan, you know, your time period is still not very constrained, your, your investment horizon is still not very squished together, so your monthly repayment still gets uh, quite affordable, right? So for older couples, do be very very careful, as the chance of this being your very first and your very last property that you ever buy is very very real. The possibility is very there since there is a very long lock-in period for this PLH house. If you guys got any other thoughts, any other takeaways, do leave them in the comments and I'll read through them and let you know what I think. Cheers!